Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is why I'm watching Desperate Housewives, season one, episode 23. One wonderful day. I don't know. I don't know what to say uh, about this. I <laughs> don't remember any of it. Oh. I kind of remember the mystery, but it's so weird to me that it doesn't end. Yeah. I think that was smart. Is that the way TV worked back in the day? <laughs> Are you kidding me? The end of season five of Buffy, and then you have to wait four months to watch the season six premiere? I mean, the TV just does work so so much more differently now. Yeah. And, like, there's just, there's so little that was resolved other than we did find out what... The mystery, yeah. Yeah. I'm Dana. My mother was some junkie. They stole me and changed my name. It, kind of, because you even made a comment where you were like, oh, God, is Mike... Yeah, is Mike Zach's father? I don't think I like that. Well, then he and Julie definitely can't date. Why? Oh no, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be, <laughs> it might be frowned I mean, upon. Just kind of gross. Spare me your middle class <laughs> yeah, no, morality. I was like, I was forgetting. <laughs> so, uh, is there? What do you want to start with? Well, we finally met um, Alfred Woodard and Macad Brooks. They came in the last episode in the night, and um, but Edie came and introduced herself to them in this episode. I've been so curious to meet you. Really? Why? We're awfully brave buying a place sight unseen. Not really. We could tell from the advertisement it was just what we were looking for. This is my son, Matthew. It's nice to meet you, ma'am. Please call me Edie. Ma'am's for. Middle-aged women. Like her. You can call her ma'am anytime you want. So, are you two finding everything okay? Because we didn't do our realtor's walkthrough. Everything is fine. Oh, honey, escrow's closed. Now I can show you where to put the buckets when the rain comes. <laughs> Edie, the house is fine. But how lovely of you to stop by. Okay, here is my card. Call anytime you want. Bye. People are very friendly in this neighborhood. Yes. Yes, they are. They're moving into the, the not the Young's old house. No, um, we saw the oh the, the people leave. that left because yeah. too much stuff was happening on the street. <laughs> they got out while the getting was good. They were like goodbye, Matthew, uh, and what's her name? Betty. Betty. Okay. Betty Applewhite. <laughs> good. They were so suspicious. Look, the most suspicious in a concentrated <laughs> amount of time. They were so clearly up to no good. So, are you two finding everything okay? because we didn't do our realtor's walkthrough. Everything is fine. Oh, honey, escrow's closed. Now I can show you where to put the buckets when the rain comes. <laughs> and they did move in in the middle of the night. <laughs> and Edie, and they bought the house sight unseen over the phone, and Edie was like... Or Edie in this whole episode. Just, yeah. <laughs> On an island alone. Edie, like, clocked how weird they were being, too. <laughs> so it's like, we'll see. It's only a matter of time. I do remember what... Uh, their deal is. what their deal is okay. and um, yeah I feel like I remember just like one ounce of it I like remember but not anything specific at oh, all oh well you remember one ounce of it but it was a very unspecific yeah, it's ounce like, I just, what like, do you remember I know I feel like he did something I feel like Makad Brooks did something we're gonna have to just keep watching <laughs> we're gonna have to do what we did with True Blood and just like launch right yeah. into season two I was gonna argue that I think that we should do True Blood season three first because we'll get it done faster and then immediately come back to this so yeah Gabby testifies for Carlos it's very <laughs> Well, sure. First, her testimony's not going great because she's like, he's an angry Neanderthal asshole. Well, I, I would argue it is. <laughs> well, but she's uh, like, but he's not a gay basher. And she's like, let's let's be real. Yeah. And um, she's like, I was lonely, and so I led him to think I was having an affair, even though I wasn't. And then it, it did look like it was going okay because the judge was like, there's no, I don't think you've got grounds for a hate crime here. And so then 
But John. then fucking John. Just so you know, you beat up the wrong guy. Didn't you think it was strange that you had the only lawn on Wisteria Lane that needed to be mowed three times a week? You're kidding me. What a fool. Is this, ju is this just still because of the baby? I, yeah. Does he want that baby? He thinks he does. What if it's not his? <laughs> He's got something to prove, I guess. Ugh, so he don't comes, knock up Danielle. He, <laughs> that would slip right through the cracks with Brie right now. He ends up very busy with Makad Brooks. <laughs> I thought Julie. No. No, Danielle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he comes in and whispers into Carlos's ear that he beat up the wrong guy. Uh to which in front of the entire judge, jury, and executioner, Carlos screams, I'll kill you! I'll kill, kill you, you with my power! Murder! He's doing it again! God's sake, so somebody stop him! We will have order! Kill you! I am going to kill you! Order! <laughs> Although, to be fair, I'll give John one point, which is that he, when he was whispering in Carlos's ear, he was like, why did you think your lawn was the only one on Wisteria Lane that needed to be mowed three times a week? Which, like, please. You'll remember in one of our early episodes, I was like, Carlos is the kind of person that I was like, he doesn't notice until he does. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, and then it yeah. all catches up. I mean, at least he's going to be in prison where he can't hurt Gabby for a minute. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I was going to be like, I feel like he's just back out on house arrest or something. But uh, yeah, eight months. <laughs> I'm sick of him. And then we have Tom and Lynette. Yeah. OK. Uh, so it, it doesn't make you feel good. No, I think it's designed that way. You know, I didn't tell you to quit. No, no. Well, you made damn sure that I'd go nowhere for the next 20 years. I don't know what to say. I guess I'm on Tom's side. I am on both their sides because I understand Tom's frustration. And he seems like he came from a relatively traditional upbringing. So he wants to be the one who's the breadwinner. I understand that. And also, as we learned in the early episodes... He insisted that Lynette stay home with the kids. So he she finds him playing air hockey against a bunch of like children, little twerps <laughs> and having the time of his life, the absolute time is like just destroying children left and right at air hockey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is 19, 19, 19 zip. Bring just it. Stay here with me. Get in your face. That is 20 zip game out. Tom. What are you doing? I'm playing air hockey. What's it look like? Kevin, you're up. And so she's like, what's going on? It's the middle of the day. And he's like, no, I quit because you went behind my back and told my boss not to give me the promotion. So he gave it to Annabelle. So I quit. Again, a slight misrepresentation of the facts. Lynette did not go anywhere and beg anyone. She had lunch with the boss's wife. Well, OK. And but made a convincing Roundabout she, but argument. she was being deceitful. She was. She was she absolutely was. trying to. Yeah. To manipulate. But everybody the keeps saying you begged his wife mm -hmm. not to. Die. And again, I'm still. Let's put some blame on the boss who like shouldn't be making business decisions this way. And also, it is a symptom of the bigger problem, which is that they are not on the same page. Yeah. Because not only did he not knew she did this. Excuse me. He doesn't even have a concept of her concerns. Yeah, because then, so basically he's like, Tom. Go home, Lynette, go home before I say something I regret. Go home. Which at least he has the wherewithal to know that. So she leaves and she's waiting for him back at home. He has seemingly also had some drinks <sighs> since she last saw him. So he graduated from the arcade. And so... You said something about, like, they're not on the same page with, like, her concerns or whatever. And so, yeah. So she was like, if you had gotten that job, you would have, we would have never seen you. You would have been away. And then he really gross and kind of smug, sarcastically comes around behind her and is like, yeah, well, good thing everything's fine now. And I just was like, all right, dude, you know exactly what would have happened if you got that job. 
Um, uh, mm, I think he's. Mm, you think he's too dumb to know what, exactly what would have happened I if he got that job? I think he. I think he's, he's just he's idealistic the, about it. Okay. I think he's the type of person that only imagines how things could have gone well. Okay. Like I don't think he considers because the idea that Annabelle might be out to get him is is completely he's oblivious. Sure. To this and which again it just goes to they need to be communicating better yeah. and, and, and I would argue that they actually communicate the best out of most of these couples <laughs> but this is which like, is why life is hard yeah which is why relation it's not that when when people wax poetic about like marriage is hard and it takes work and it's like that is true because any it <laughs> yeah, any relationship takes work. I understand sharing that. Sharing your life with another person gets yeah. messy. Of course. Quickly. But like I I specifically really resist to the people who are like it's the hardest work I've ever done. I don't like that. I, you should not be waking up every morning feeling like you're going to the office just to be in your relationship. Your relationship should be your reprieve from your work. But also it's like we conflate like like relationships because I am not married but I do have a I'm gonna a harem of, of friends you have a lot of married friends <laughs> I have a lot of yeah well and I have a lot of friendships that, I, that I'm very close with and it, it I think people conflate work with labor yeah work isn't but by, by it's it doesn't have it's to not be inherently hard, hard yeah. or painful yeah it just you you, you have to you have to make decisions that prioritize the relationship. Sure. You have to make decisions to make things work. Yeah. And I think that this is a good example of how two people can be well suited and things can still get out of get out of control once yeah. you start adding in children and friends and acts of God. Old and yeah, like Well, and the <laughs> other thing too is that like what I really didn't like is that because she, because Lynette had seemingly made this unilateral decision behind his back, he then makes the unilateral decision that she'll be going back to work and he will be a stay-at-home dad. Good fucking luck. You have no concept of what these children need on a daily basis. All of the chores, making the doctor's appointments. It's But I would argue that 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 should have been what they did from the start. I agree. So I think he has the potential to be a fantastic stay-at-home dad. There's just going to be a learning curve. Yeah, but that we're but unsure who Lynette is going to be picking up the slack for that in the meantime. Based and also, seen. he is going to get so butt hurt when she gets a VP position because she's better at it than him. I don't know. I don't know if I. Be, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, I think, I think we'll it's a valid see. concern. Yeah. I. I don't know. I. I think my issue. With all, because because I need to stress, I love Lynette. Yeah, this is not this is not me being like Team Tom, but I think I think the reason why I re I relate to Tom, I think because I I think he's smart. I think he's clever. I think he's a good person. Yeah. Like I think he's kind and all that. And I think that he does have some issues with reality. Oh, yeah. And I relate to that. But when you reach a certain intimacy with people, it's, oh, God, I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. I think he resents her acting like his mother. Like, I think he resents... Yeah, but I know he behaves in a way that requires that. But it's you like teach people how to treat you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like I, I think what she did is only a problem because it became a problem. Yeah. Like if it wasn't a problem, yeah. then it wouldn't matter. Like if the Annabelle thing hadn't happened, her going around and not giving him that promotion wouldn't have been an issue. And so it's the kind of thing where it's like, I think he feels very betrayed because he's like, we have this arrangement. We have this agreement. And you bypassed me completely yeah. where, cause again, like I said, I relate to it where there's times where I can be on another planet and I resent people moving around me. Like I'm like, I'm a liability or like I'm not there. And there's times where I'm like, engage with me. If you're mm. concerned about this, pull me on board. Let me be an active participant sure. in the relationship. Not something that needs to be monitored. Okay. That's I think where I'm at. And again, he's not doing 
<laughs> well, again, I'm like, for, for Tom, I'm like, you, you teach people how to treat you. You, 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 you have are taught right. Lynette that she has to make decisions around you because you are making these decisions based in this idyllic utopia that you've created in your own mind that just flat out does not exist. Like, do you, you think that, like, him traveling twice as much is going to be like conducive to their marriage they're gonna not have sex every nine days <laughs> I'll tell you that or like that was wild nine days, <laughs> nine days is the longest they'd ever gone so like that, I mean no judgment if you're that kind of no, couple I mean, mazel but. Again, but but that's the thing it's like you're gonna be gone for days and days and days and days at a time you're you're Kids are going to think you're an absentee father. Well, like, it opens up the opportunity for you to meet other people, for yeah. her to meet other people, yeah. for your lives to start growing apart separately. Yeah. And no, it, it truly is. But I, I and I and it's the kind of thing where it's like, I don't know. I, I think I, I just I think I resented him making that smug, sarcastic remark about oh, sure. how like everything was cool now. And I'm like, yeah, but again, you were not like Tom was not looking at the the negative outcomes, like you said, mm-hmm. he was like, well, it's going to be great because the money and the promotion and the mm-hmm. status and like, this is my career. And if I don't make VP now, it'll never happen and all that stuff. And it's just like, okay. But like, do you want a family or do you want a career? Because the way that you are trying to operate, you're not going to have. Well, both. which is something that we as millennials are <clears throat> grappling with. Yeah. Because we, there has been an image of, yeah. There has been an image of suburbia imprinted upon us yeah. and we need to to figure out what of that a a what of that do we even want? Yeah. And b how do we achieve the individual elements, you know, let alone all together. So Yeah. There's also like to go back to like the Gabby and Carlos thing a little bit. The thing that really traps my ass in stuff like this, especially when we go back and watch it because Everybody is like, oh, I can't wait to start a family. And I'm like, did you, are you together? Are you committed to each other? Did you get married? Anything like that? You are a family. Mm-hmm. You don't have to have these children to be a family. Cause I think Carlos even said it at one point, like now we get to be a family. And I was like, you already were a family. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you're just making me crazy. Mm-hmm. It's like it, that kind of, that kind of. Thing. And I, I, I will say again, I don't, I don't think that Tom handled it perfectly. No, you're, you are you are great in our in our watch along. If you want to join, mm-hmm. you can join our watch alongs. Um, but you were right that he was entitled to a hissy fit. Mm-hmm. But it's like it's. But the, he does push. He he pushed too far. And I, th- th- there is something that is sort of there. There is something sort of freeing, being like, because because Lynette is a bit of a know it all. Of course, yeah. And there's something kind of freeing, being like, you got all the answers, you do it. Yeah. But again, just like there will be a learning curve for him, there will also be a learning curve for her. So she is now going into season two, double duty, yeah. where she has to relearn how to be the boss mm-hmm. and also teach him how to be mom. Yeah. And <laughs> Mike? Well, I was going to go to Bree and Rex. Okay. I started to say something with Rex. You, did you not remember that he died? Well, I knew he had to die or leave at some point because I know she has at least one other husband. Mm -hmm. So, but I didn't remember it being in the finale. You made a comment in the episode where you're like, wouldn't it be great if he just like died? Yeah. And part of, I've been waiting this Uh entire time for you to say it. And when you never did, I was like, she doesn't remember. Oh no, I did not remember it was now. I I mean, I remembered there must have been So what actually, did he die of sadness? Like what did his heart just give out? Uh, no, I think he... Because when he was writing that note to Bree, he believes she's been poisoning him with potassium. So not sad. I think he just worked himself up. Okay. He was like gasping at the end, and I was like, "Dude, calm the yeah, fuck that, down." Yeah, that's that's sort of. But and I'm also like, aren't aren't people monitoring him? Like, yes. shouldn't things be going boop 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 boop? Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Also, um, the do- that doctor should not have left his medical chart in there. Or, but al- also... The- so that's what I wanted to say, okay. is I... Because I also straight up forgot he was a doctor. <laughs> when he was like, let me see the chart. And I was like, what the hell? The- <laughs> G- give it, I got it. <laughs> what are you going to do with the medical chart? That's precisely what I was going to say, is I remember the first time watching it, and this time there is something about Rex that doesn't connect or doesn't land. And I... 
for I couldn't figure out what it was until that very scene. Okay. And it's we in the entire first season never see him as a character on his own, own in a way yeah. that's not tied because we do see him go to Maisie Gibbons. Yeah. But it's still tied to his marriage. Bree. Yeah. And just one scene of seeing him being good at being a doctor. Yeah kind of changes his character entirely. Little, yeah. And I'm like, I wish we got one or two more scenes like that sure. so that we had I would reason feel more to connect to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like, what if like what he could have been the doctor for Juanita, he could have been Juanita's doctor. You know what I mean? Like easily and, and see and like, and especially like seeing, seeing him be have good bedside manner or something. Yeah. Because unfortunately the way that, it all falls. He's just kind of like, mm. yeah. And I don't care <laughs> because like, so Brie kept talking about like talking to her aunt Fern on her wedding day and talking about how the best is yet to come. And I was like, well, for you, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it, You'll it, be sad for a little. Brie goes through hell. I know. Hell. <laughs> yeah. I, Cause I remember what Andrew does. Oh God. <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> Again, as I recall, they end on good terms. Yeah. Uh, Cause she. Mild spoilers. You, I mean, I assume if you're watching this, you know the deal, but she ends up kind of like a Martha Stewart type. Oh, oh, I do remember that. And Andrew is effectively running her business because yeah. that's a good place for sociopaths. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> In was, upper management. I was, it's true. I just was, I think it was at that work thing I went to. I was just talking about, they were, Talking about like sugar nests. Mm. And I remember she's got this whisk that has little balls on the bottom and you make the sugar syrup and you whip it across two mm -hmm. things and she makes a little sugar nest. I remember that vividly. You have such, yeah. <laughs> considering you never watch this yeah. show, it, you have, like it, it must have been plugged into you at one point when you were sleeping. Maybe. Because well, I just, I mean, I hung around with you in the same house for Well, you also said years. Karen watched it. Karen did watch it a little bit. Uh -huh. yeah. But, um, so what you do and don't know yeah. is staggering. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I mean, he died. Yeah. And but he also I, I hate that he died thinking Bree's been poisoning him with potassium because like I and I'm sure George will get his comeuppance at some point. But like that is that has to be the pills that George has been giving him is potassium pills because mm -hmm. George knows you have to know how things interact with each other if you're a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I And also the, the fucking doctor friend that was like, who prepares your meals? Fuck you, dude. Well, the, based on the information he has. Which is very little information. <laughs> especially after that speech that Brie made to him about, like, the best is yet to come. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's ridiculous. So that does... Yeah, it's like Susan, Mike, Paul, and Zach and Mary Alice are all. What do you? So, what do you think about that? About the the mystery, the Mary Alice. What did you do? It's fine. Um, I, I don't know. I've never, I have never felt a desperate desire to be a mother. So, I don't relate to Mary Alice or Deirdre in this whole thing. Um, but I, I'm especially can't get it up for Deirdre because she sold her baby. We you know about your baby. <laughs> and then she sold him <laughs> to Mary Alice and Paul and then just... So that was something that I remember liking about the show. Came is because back four years later? Th the entire season, you have a sense of what you think is happening. And I think it's very interesting that ultimately what you think is happening is what's happening. Yeah. However, they find a way to wait until the last minute to clear everything up. Yeah. And you do sort of go, oh, because you get yeah. you get the sense that it was like a one off. Like you get the sense that Mary Alice and Paul acquired this child through not necessarily nefarious, but certainly not a, on the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> means. And. That holds together, like, sure, but I think the fact that Mary Alice, I mean, first of all, knowing that 
she was a nurse, knowing she had history with Deirdre, having having Deirdre because Mary Alice didn't pursue this. Yeah. Deirdre laid it at her feet. Deirdre said, I will sell you my baby for money so I can buy more heroin. I'll sell you my baby. <sighs> what? How much money do you keep in the house? And then several years later. That is a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> you don't get that baby back. I don't care if you're, you're clean now. Go find a man and have another baby. <laughs> And so, I'm gonna get so much heat. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it 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 does sort of because there's a, it, Mary Alice is so beautiful and warm mm-hmm. and 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 pleasant that 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 for me and especially in this rewatch is the great tragedy where you're just like, oh my god, yeah. like why did this woman do this? Oh, Mary Alice. What did you do? Well, it's also like, at she's just, if she couldn't have a baby, she's going to be a much better mother than Deirdre, who presumably got pregnant while she was high. I think they made a comment that the yeah. kid was... Yeah. Was born. <laughs> Addicted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, I just, I don't know. But, I mean, like... Ultimately, at the end of the day, I I do like that it is that it was much more layered and complicated because that makes it feel more authentic and it yeah. makes it feel more believable. And I still have a slight disconnect, and I don't I don't think I want to get too far into this conversation because there's negative and offensive implications that I don't mean. But <laughs> I I have a slight disconnect believing that Mary Alice would kill herself that way. Well, if given- the secret was going to come out. So she's just gonna abandon yeah. him more. I feel. Like, I honestly feel like we like had she this knows her exact husband. conversation. The last. Yeah, she knows he's useless. Yeah. So it's like, and that's why I was like, oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Mm-hmm. That it, 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 because I know that is suicide. One of the words that we can say on on aliving. <laughs> no, just say it. I. You have to be able to say words. I know that suicide is very complex. And that is a very, uh, uh, regressive way of thinking that like, well, if oh. she, if only she loved her family more, no, no, like, no, that's not I what mean, I'm implying. That's not, that's not even what the show is implying. I think she thought there was no way out, mm-hmm. which was like what it usually is. Be- because I mean, ironically, I feel like had she not killed herself, none of this would have happened. It just completely unravels the second. Yeah, shoot. you're telling me six foot Brenda Strong <laughs> couldn't have overpowered There's Christine a Estabrook? There's a scene in the show where Deirdre's like, "You were always so high and mighty back at the clinic, looking down on us poor degenerates." You're always looking down at me. <laughs> She's so tall; she can't help it. Yeah, I mean, I I sort of I tend to think you're right, although. If Noah was really that much of a dog with a bone, then he would have just, Mike was already there. He would have spared no expense to keep trying to find out what happened to Deirdre. And like, I mean, that is sick what they did. Like they just, she went to go try to steal Zach. Mary Alice picked up that knife, stabbed her right in the gut. And then they hacked her into pieces, put her in that toy chest and buried her under the pool foundation. They buried her in a box. In a box. I mean, (laughs) holy shit. Um, it's a thing for but my me. favorite though is when it, it as it's escalating, as the scene is escalating, yeah. and Deirdre's like charging to the stairs, and Mary Alice just sort of grabs a knife. There, you were just sort of like, Yeah, that's what happens. Like, <laughs> you were kind of like, <laughs> Mothers will do a lot to protect their children, and just because she didn't birth Zach doesn't mean uh, that she yeah. didn't. Like, she's she, he's her son, and also what I mentioned too that I was like, the the issue here is like what what is Deirdre's like best case scenario? Because like no matter what happens, if she even if they let her take Zach away, he thinks his name is Zach. She's gonna keep calling him Dana because she's very belligerent about that to Mary Alice and Paul. And then also he's just gonna be with a stranger. He doesn't know her. He doesn't mm-hmm. have memories, but he was like 10 months old when she left him. That is another. Zach is, I think, a, a, a an unfortunate 
um, casualty. Yeah, I was gonna say I want to say side effect, but because I, I don't really remember what they do with him. Uh, like moving forward. Yeah, he's he is psychotic. He's holding Susan hostage this whole episode because he wants to kill Mike because somehow he now has found out the whole story. I guess Felicia told him mm-hmm. the whole thing. He attacked her, and he and... attacked her with a hockey stick. What did you do to my dad? Ah, tell me. And fucking Susan and Edie's. It's uh, talk about two people that are destined to not be friends because they they just 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 organically at their resting states they don't mix. Yeah, and then they keep being put together. Elevated. (laughs) Don't answer it. I can see you. <laughs> and because Susan is trying to communicate to Edie that Zach is holding her hostage. Yeah. And Edie's sort of like, what did you tell me to Stick do? Stick it up my what? <laughs> yeah. Very silly. And I do, I do, I remember feeling bad for Edie because she just does seem to be constantly left like a watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also, so Mike had Paul out in the abandoned quarry, and Paul finally was like, why are you even doing this? <laughs> what do you think is happening? <laughs> yeah. And so Mike just like threw down the picture of Deirdre, and Paul was like, oh, you knew her? And then told Mike the whole story, and then Mike just left him tied up in the middle of this quarry in the middle of nowhere. Let's get this over with. I didn't really finish what I was saying with Zach, mostly because I don't oh. remember where he goes. Yeah. I don't remember how much he's in season two. Well, we know that he's keeping Bongo from dinner time. <laughs> yeah, they let Susan take care okay. of Bongo. For they were I have... was like, send Bongo with Julie and yeah. Carl. Susan was going to feed Bongo. And so then she comes in the house and Bongo starts growling at her. But then later, and so then we see Zach and you're like, oh shit, maybe he was growling at Zach. But he sat right down after we see Zach. And then later... Zach is just like petting him like everything is normal. And I was like, man, that dog really doesn't like Susan. (laughs) 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 Like, really, she he doesn't like Susan. Um, But yeah, basically what I I do remember the last time we see Zach and it's sort of weird and funny. Mm -hmm. So there's that. I think he ends up with money somehow. That's that would be. Bad, actually. Yeah, so he's just kind of eccentric. Like a megalomaniac. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that that's largely it. We did mention, yeah, we mentioned Alfred Woodard. Yep, yep. I mean, of course I remember the concept of a cliffhanger, but usually it's sort of like this feels like there's another episode. Yeah. Well, the way the way that the TV we've been watching for the last whenever since Game of Thrones started it like the you do the cliffhanger thing in the penultimate episode and then you like wrap up just enough. Well, that, that, that's what I was going to say. I was like, you tidy m- most many things up and then drop this like nugget. Yeah. But this is just sort of like we're done. Yeah, this has wrapped up <laughs> almost nothing. So, um, OK, we don't know. What exactly our plan is moving forward? We, we will be back that. soon for season two. We think. Yeah. So you want to? You want to? Yeah, I I still think that we should do True Blood season three, True Blood first, and then mm-hmm. come back to this, just because then that way we'll have something else like done because True Blood's shorter. Just long enough for us to forget everything. It'll be then- fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> If we don't finish one season of True Blood before the end of this year, I I'm canceling the whole channel. <laughs> Okay, so uh, hopefully you had a good time and we will see you back soon. 